Okay, so in this video, we will explore conservation of total mechanical energy. So what do we mean by conservation of total mechanical energy? If a system is said to be conservative, then the system's initial mechanical energy is equal to the system's final mechanical energy. That is to say that E sub zero is equal to E sub F, where E is equal to UK and U is the gravitational potential energy or maybe the gravitational potential energy or you may use the spring potential energy according to the type of problem that you are using. So U again is a potential energy. It could be the gravitational or spring uh, potential energy. M in the equation above is mass. G is gravity. H is height. K the lowercase k, and that would be the k over here in this uh, part of the equation, is equal to a spring constant, and each spring has its own uh, spring constant. x is the displacement uh, the spring has been, uh, or is the distance the spring has been displaced from equilibrium. Okay, now our capital K up here in our total uh, mechanical energy equation here is equal to half mv squared, where m is the mass and v is the velocity, okay? And that k again, remember that capital K here, we're using that for kinetic energy. Okay, so now that we understand a little bit more about what the total mechanical energy is and what the conservation of energy is when it comes to a, a total mechanical system, let's take an example or take a look at an example here. In this example, we have a track uh, with this sort of, I guess you can say, uh, uh, U-shape. And we have a ball that's being released from the top of the track. All right. So if the ball on this side here height, uh, has a height of 1 and it is released, it will make it to the other side where H2 on this side is equal to h1 if the system is conservative so again if the system is conservative when the ball is released from this side the ball will reach the exact same height on the other side when the ball is released so in other words h2 is equal to h1 in a case like that we say that the system is conservative and we can use a potential uh, gravitational equation that we saw on the prior slide uh, to represent this uh, scenario to show that it's uh, conservative. So initially, we have the energy in the system all being potential energy. And when the ball gets to the opposite side over here, th the potential energy over here will be equal to mgh2. And again, if this is a conservative system, then h2 has to be equal to h1. Okay. Uh, in this case, for this uh, scenario here, our kinetic energy on both ends ends up being equal to zero. And the reason why it's equal to zero is if we have the ball here at the top and it's not moving, remember the kinetic energy had the equation or had the uh, variable of uh, velocity in there. So if the ball is not moving, then the kinetic energy is equal to zero. And when you release the ball from over on this side and it gets over to this side, when it reaches its max height, the ball will stop temporarily, and at that max height, the kinetic energy will also be equal to zero. And so that's why the energy, the kinetic energy in both of these are zero. Okay, so um, given that that's the case, let's say we're still looking at a conservative uh, system. So we're looking at conservation of energy again. If that is the case, then if we were to roll the ball from up here and we were to analyze the problem as if the ball's uh, final position was here at the bottom or where, 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 where we are actually interested in, it's here at the bottom, then what happens then is we're saying that the potential energy or, or rather the energy, the total energy up here should be equal to the energy at the bottom, okay? So that's what we expect to happen, that the energy at the top should be equal to the energy at the bottom. Now, again, this is what we're saying. E sub 0 is equal to E sub F, which gives us this equation here. E sub 0, or pardon me, U sub 0 plus K sub 0 is equal to UF plus KF. 
Now, remember now, when the ball, okay, is at the top, there's no kinetic energy because there's no velocity until it's actually released and it starts rolling down the, uh, the ramp here. Now, when the ball gets down here to the bottom, the potential energy is actually equal to zero at this point because there is no height. This is at the bottom here. There is no height at the bottom. So because of that, K sub zero is equal to zero. Use of F is equal to zero. And so therefore then, let me roll back here. Therefore then, our equation turns out to be equal to the following, where the uh, energy at the beginning, MGH1, which is a potential energy that was stored here. Oh, there we go again. The energy that was stored here at the top converts itself totally into kinetic energy. And I do not know why that's happening. The, the, the energy is converted to uh, kinetic energy here at the bottom of the ramp. Okay. So again, the energy is conserved. It went from total potential energy into kinetic energy here at the bottom. All right, so let's take a look at another example of a situation where we, we, um, we analyze a system as if it has uh, conservation of energy. So let's say, for instance, we have this track here with a car that has a uh, spring in it, and that spring inside of the car, we're going to use that to launch the car going up the track. Okay, we're going to use that to launch the car going up the track here. All right, so in this case, what happens is the energy that's stored inside of the spring is converted from potential energy, potential spring energy, and converted into potential gravitational energy. Okay, so when that uh, when the spring pops out of the car here, the car goes up to the top, and it's going to stop at some point here, and we'll be able to find, uh, if this is a conservative system, then the energy that was stored inside of the spring inside the car here should be equal to the energy of the car, uh, the potential energy when the car gets to that height. And so what we're saying is that, again, E sub 0 is equal to E sub I, or E sub F, actually, this should be E sub F. And we're saying then that the potential energy in the spring initially or at the beginning is equal to the potential energy uh, that we find from the gravitational. And so therefore then half kx squared, which again is the potential energy stored in the spring, should be equal to mgh. And by the way, the h here would be the height that the car traveled. So we find this height going across here and we find this height here, and so the difference between these two heights then would be uh, the h that's here, all right? Okay, so what if we have a system where it is not conservative? So in other words, friction is involved or some, something similar to uh, some sort of a outside force is preventing the, uh, uh, the system from being conservative, okay? So in a case when a system is not conservative, that means energy has been lost. When energy is lost, it's most likely due to some kind of a friction, whether it be uh, surface friction in this case with the ball, or it may be air resistance that keep, that's keeping the ball from moving uh, or, or causing the system to lose uh, some of the energy. Okay. So for example here, if friction is involved, and this is no longer a conservative system, then what happens is when the ball is released from this side here and it comes down the ramp, then what happens is, is the ball will not, again, it will not get to the same height as it was over on this side. So therefore, because the ball does not get to the same height that it was over on this side, then we know that some energy was lost due to friction, okay? some energy was lost due to friction. Now, this is a key note here. If we were to have this ball over on this side, let's say, and we just release the ball, we didn't push it or we don't push it or anything, we just release it, let it flow down the ramp, the ball can at most get to the same height on the other side if there is no friction. 
If there is some friction, then it will not reach the same height. But that ball, as long as we do not add any force at the beginning, will never go past the original height over here, or, or over on the initial side here, okay? So H2, it's impossible to have H2 being larger than H1. H2 uh, larger than H1 is impossible unless an external force is applied to the ball uh, within the system, okay? All right, so this uh, concludes our discussion on conservation of total mechanical energy. Uh, please do check out my website for additional uh, physics and engineering types uh, uh, problems and discussions. Or you can also check out my personal website, and that's www.clydeletsum.com. And again, that's www.clydeletsum.com.